moving into round one of Magic Origins Draft. First recording for ZamandaBluffs.com. I'm playing um, Sir Rygerson. And for those of you who have never seen one of my videos, or just forget because I haven't been here forever. I keep the chat open to the right outside of the recording screen, so sometimes I reference that and mention it. I don't know if I want to keep this. My opponent is playing first. I have a pretty strong hand with any um, land draw. So I think I'm going to keep it because I get a, a couple of lands and plus an anointer of champions. It's pretty risky, mind you. Um, I just think since one land turns on almost all of my hand, it's going to be better than a six. My opponent did not mulligan. Uh, yeah, I, this is a greedy keep, but I think it works. On the, on, the, uh, on the draw. Definitely not on the play. I did get there. Not to be results oriented, but I'm happy about it. That's for sure. Let's see. Ooh, the mirror match. You don't say, friends. You don't say. We'll play that in case there's any shenanigans as I attack in. I'm pretty excited that um, I get to play the free blade. And then next turn, smash for three again with while keeping the anointer um, pretty well protected. Turn three? Unless something silly goes down, I'm just going to play another free blade. Keep getting there with these guys. Claustrophobia is fine hanging out until the next island comes around town. Um, it's going to be used for uh, um, when, if my opponent has a stabilizing huge-o creature. And you're to the ether. Okay, my opponent's trying to buy some time. That's fine with me. I'm using the anchor to help me just draw another free blade. That's okay. Um, play that guy out. F6 and just attack with the anointer. Um, this guy's pretty scary if my opponent has a board present gets to smash me through. But if my opponent just wants to buy time, yeah, go for it. Um, I'll get to play that just fine. Tower Geist, yeah. Don't love the card advantage my opponent has, but we're basically the same number of spells, and I think my board presence is a little more scary. We get to attack in next turn with a 3-3, three, because three, this has the threat into a um, pump. Opponent's not going to take it. I'll still probably pump anyway, just to get that extra damage in. If I draw a land, I'll be super happy, because I'll get to have Topin Free Blade plus one of my tricks up. If I don't, things are still okay. Oh, but things are great right now. Okay, we're just going to be smashing with Free Blades day in and day out. So my opponent does not block. Oh, my opponent is missing something. Yeah, my opponent was not paying attention at that point. Or was and really wants to slow the game down, which um, is fine with me. But Keep my free blades off for now. That's cool. And here's where I feel like Anointer shines. I can attack him with both effectively as 3-3s three because of Threat of Activation. Yeah, so they get a trade with anything with the Ring Warden Owl. And what my opponent doesn't know is that I have Disperse. Um, and so because of that, I'm just going to blank my opponent's turn. Go ahead and bash in, get all of my guys turned up. Yeah, I like that game plan. Just be the aggressor here. Sets my opponent back so far. Well, F6, attack with all creatures. Yep, yep. Go for it, friends. Get big, honey. Keep mightily up, mighty leap up for anything. Although in these colors, I don't think there's anything that does damage that where I just need to pump guys. Griffin's not going to cut it. Doesn't really block. Um, I'm not going to play the Knightly Valor here. I'd rather keep um, the Mighty Leap up. Uh, so plus, I don't want to play Knightly Valor into a uh, Disperse, which might be what my opponent's game plan is here. Since my opponent did not play the 3-3, three, three, which does trade, so we'll see. Let's see what happens. Blocks? Yeah. So there's a block. I'll just do some extra damage here. I have the Mighty Leap if my opponent wants to uh, try to do a pump of his or her own. A disperse, yeah. Worried that that was going to be the case, but that's fine. We'll just get to replay it. That's another reason why. Oh, maybe I just do Knightly Valor now, since my opponent is tapped out now. Huh, huh. huh. One, two, three, four. Yes, yeah, so my opponent's going to be pretty. Uh, will pretty quickly here be able to um, replay the. Uh, what do you call it? Um. 
Oh my gosh, what's it called? Uh, the Ringworn Owl and have a land down and have another Disperse of Elves. I don't know if Nightly Valor is ever going to have a super clean time to play. I just, But the thing is, I like its haste value. Yeah. I'm just going to replay the, the blade. It, it was a nice opening to consider putting the Valor on my Tobin Free Blade. It's already the target for Disperse. And look, my opponent doesn't have the, uh, the extra land right now, so somewhat rewarded on that gamble. Um... So if I put the Knightly Valor on the Topin Free Blade, we get an attack with immunity here. Opponent would have to double block. Yeah, so we're in good shape. There is that um, the one mana trick, which I have in my deck. I forget what it's called. Uh, but it's still not going to be anything that uh, blows me out with a two for one. Um, I still just get to attack um, pretty handily. Absolutely loving these Free Blades. I've never played with them, but everyone said they were fine. I did take an 11-year-old to a pre-release. I didn't play myself because I was helping this uh, awesome new kid into Magic. And um, I remember seeing the Tilburg Freeblades going, These are my favorite! We're going to let this guy die. Go ahead and pump this guy up. Um, just because it's going to die anyway. I'm not going to be able to get both creatures. Get the most damage through. And I like where we're at. Mighty Leap can make the Knight lethal. Sphinx's so Tutelage is going to be horrible against my deck, which has just the most insane curve ever. Opponent is tapped out. So I just win? No, because my opponent can still like chump and everything. Uh, but my opponent does have to block both um, for a win. So I'll attack and see if my opponent tries to do like some weird double block on the free blade, which would never happen. But um, this way, if the knight doesn't get blocked, I can win. Although I anticipate both being blocked um, at, right now. A chump and a trade. I'm not going to play. I'm not going to use the mighty leap just to... Uh, oh, no. I guess it didn't matter. Okay, good. I was like, I forgot to um, do my Anoiter. However, uh, I did not need to use my Anoiter since um, everything was, was fine on the combat map there. Opponent's going to see more of my deck, which is fairly frustrating. But, oh, wait! Could I... Uh, <laughs> I think I could have won with the Anoiter of Champions. So at this point in the game, I just stopped thinking of the Anoiter as an attacker. Uh, but if I had Mighty Lept the Anoiter... No, it still wouldn't have mattered. My opponent's at four. Never mind. Still couldn't have done it. This is still a okay. The merfolk, oh the merfolk. Ugh, I'm gonna be so conservative and continue to uh, not use the mighty leap. Basically, because I lose this game by me getting blown out with a like some another dis um, dispel or something, like doing a mighty leap on the token free blade and then getting dispersed, and then I've lost the knightly valor and the mighty leap and being set way back. Here is like it's fine. My opponent has to chump. We're just eating cards left and right. Yes, there's a Sphinx's tutelage on the board, but it's gonna be forever before um, I, I get decked. Mind you, this is good against me because uh, both non-land cards share card fine, but because there's plenty of lands, I don't have to really worry about it. Now we're set up for a nice win. It sucks that my opponent gets to see so much of my graveyard, but whatever. Okay. It's like, what? Another Tobin free blood? There you have so many. Ooh, well, we're gonna just win the game now. Yeah, my opponent seems to have a very controlly deck, uh, and I'm just gonna win because of that. Uh, we'll just go ahead and Mighty Leap Home Slice here for the Rubbins. My opponent's tapped out, so there's no way this matters. Boink. Nice. Okay, remind me, this is the guy that when he attacks, it just destroys something. And then uh, has basically pseudo vigilance, because that's seven mana at that point. I mean, you're just going to sink it into there. So, artifact and enchantment. Oh, man, I don't think I have anything to sideboard to help with that. My deck is already set up very well to deal with this type of. Um, opponent 
again being mine just being a, a way more um, aggressive and you know simple curve um, psychic rebuttal targets you no there's our Nivix bear. No, I just like I like the aggression actually, so I'm really glad the rune server is here over the um, aspiring aeronaut. Is there a way to get more aggressive? This valor just sucks. I don't. I mean, I could add the Crone Jailer as quote unquote more aggressive, but I don't want to take any of my other creatures. They're just way better. And displacement wave. If I'm doing that, I'm losing the game already because my opponent's going to be able to come back better than I am. How do I like my mana base? I like it. Um, again, Claustrophobia, harder to cast. We didn't get to the other island, but I think that's fine. I'm already hedging towards more islands than I really need. Uh, I'd rather be able to, again, be held out on that than not cast my Celestial Flares or Lieutenants on time. So, yep. Keep it. Just run it back the way it is. Jeez, look at this. This deck is awesome. Snap keeping, nice two drops, a removal spell, boomsity, boomsity, and now we have a three drop. Okay, so am I playing the Lieutenant first? Yeah, I think so. I think it's easier on the Renown. Renown, whatever it's called. Gosh, if we draw another land and go Lieutenant into Free Blade, Free, free, uh, free Blade, Free Blade, oh, I'm going to be so happy. First Strike um, is key here to be able to attack into my opponent's whatevers. Could see a Dispel here. Don't know. Oh, that's a little bit of a bummer, but still okay. Not planning on using Celestial Flare, but gotta get ready for it. Opponent's just gonna chump. We'll lose use Celestial Flare unless they're yeah. Just chumping, we just draw. Oh yeah. We got our fourth land drop. Ooh, this is gonna be brutal. Pumpkin has something. Like displacement wave, but even then, without a board presence, it's okay. Although I guess displacement gets everything, huh? But opponent has higher converted mana cost, so that could be a thing. But look how nicely these attack in. I'll be able to celestial flare the tower guys away, play a free blade, because I assume my opponent is going to go for the block since that's what's happened previously. If my opponent doesn't block for some silly reason, then I play both free blades. All right. This renown part's gonna be key. I'm a little cocky here. Without having um, a single island, it means it's a long time. Oh, whoop, whoop, woo! And if you heard that outside, there was some random um, helicopter twirling and bleeping. Must be a popo -po helicopter, which is odd. Not something I hear too often. Sorry if it is in the background. Oh, opponent's no longer stuck on the blue manas. Oh, I still love that I can play Servitor and Topin Freeblade next turn, and we're going to keep bashing with bigger dudes. Opponent is at five though. Could play something somewhat beefy, like a Totem Guide Heart Beast. Slow things down quite a bit. Which is exactly the kind of card my opponent would like. A Swift Reckoning. Okay, that sucks, but I still get to keep my onslaught going. Opponent is slowing a whole lot down. But I get to replay some two drops. We'll hang out with the Knight of Pilgrim's Row, because I want to be efficient with my mana. I should have just gone ahead and uh Hello? Click yes? Yes, yes, yes. Um, played my two drops beforehand, so I could have F6, but whatever. Such is life. Play another free blade. Play another two drop. Important to note that with only two enchantments in my deck, when Tunnel Heartbeat's guide comes down, I don't get quite so much action online. Uh, if I... Ooh, that'll be good. Um, get one of the islands. Still just attacking with everything. We are on the aggression. We get follow-up plays. And I'm gonna get some card advantage with the Tone Guide Heart Beast. Assume there's just a block here. Yeah. Go for it. 
Disperse, maybe? If you want to, friend, go for it. I'm going to have a 3-3 to block anyway. And a 3-2, which you know I have in hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Just want to save all that damage, do ya? I still got to just replay all this stuff. I mean, next turn, I'm just going ahead and playing the Tunnel Guy Heart Beast anyway. What's the other enchantment I have? I remember I only have two. Oh, yeah, of course. My um, Knightly Valor, wherever the heck it is. There it is. Um, so if I play Heartbeats next turn, what is there a card I'd rather have the Knightly Valor on? I think I just put more power on the table, because I don't really need a block. So this is more power. And um, also having the two drop in hand means it's easier to cast multiple spells in the future. We're at equal cards in hand, which is nice, considering this is a control deck who wants to have card advantage. I get an attack into the 3-3 just fine. Yeah, here's like a nice option where I'm going to probably just play both of these down since I'm the aggressor. But let's see if my opponent chooses to block or not. I assume there's a trade, and that's great. If that's the case, I play both of these. I just want to go wide over, and I don't really need a Knightly Valor right now. No, my opponent lets it resolve. Or lets the damage get big. So what am I worried about losing to? Displacement wave. What takes out multiple creatures? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to play both of these, though, again. Mainly because I just want to have the most aggression possible. Yeah, Tome Guide Heartbeast gets me that Knightly Valor quite handily. And I run the risk of next turn drawing the Knightly Valor before I play the Heartbeast so I lose value. Um, but I'm only putting two power on the board here, whereas this is like three plus more. I guess an island would be a, a really nice draw here. Oh, oh, hello. All right, we island up the Ring Warden Owl. That means there's only two. There has to be a double block, and then my opponent takes four, five, six, seven. Alternatively, I play the Rune Servitor. We each draw. Maybe I just attack with these guys. One, two. Yeah. I'll be conservative. Is there something else I want to do? No, that's it. But if that's the case, yeah. Tap Home Slice down. I assume there's a block here, but I don't need my Servant of Arrow on, on blocks. In fact, if my opponent wants to try to go in for an attack, great. Let that be the case. 1-3 is holding back the 2-2s. Two Next turn, I'll probably stack with everything, since this 4 damage did go through. But we'll see. Could have just kept the aggression going and have my opponent just eat this, but for the 1 point of damage, it didn't really seem worth it. Oh! Now we're definitely going to do it. Because A, we just want to keep the aggression going, and B, if my opponent doesn't have anything here, uh, Celestial Flare is just going to be um, pretty nice. It allows me to get this damage in. Ooh, Thunderclap Wyvern. Maybe we have to play some tricks here, and like, after damage, do some blocks, since uh, things are about to get eaten. Do not think about that uncommon being so good here. We can go eat. We can do double block eat. See, we just go to for the free blade eat. I don't know. Save some damage. Trade if my opponent wants. Luckily, the pressure I've been putting makes this not super deadly for me. And these are definitely trades. Not necessarily trades, but there's like might be an eat here or there, but. Okay, chumping. Love that. Loves it. Eating. Going to eat here? No, just blocking. Okay, so I'm definitely doing a stop after uh, combat 
on my wait this is my turn right the end of damage um so i'm gonna use a celestial flare to kill one of these guys um, since i want this guy dead before that happens So we all just did some one for ones. Opponent loses a big old flyer. I move forward. I don't know. Again, I, I assume everyone watching this has seen a bunch of videos by now, since I've seen a bunch of videos and they've been out for a while. But if you've ever seen this interaction, it's important to note that uh, Celestial Flare, if you put a stop at the end of, on damage before um, combat is over, then uh, you can get someone in this way where you know, you've killed some of their other creatures and you get a more important creature to sacrifice in blocking. Like, you know, if they are jumping with a bunch of 1-1s or something, it's super helpful, as you just saw demonstrated. All right, I still get to attack in with everybody. Love having the Totem Guide Heart Beast follow up. Uh, I take it with everyone because my opponent can put the Thunderclap wherever in front of the Servitor here, and then I get to draw a card. Um, and that allows the one damage in the air to get through, and then this guy's lethal, so there has to be like a trade here. And this guy gets a little bit bigger. Um, maybe that isn't so fantastic. Yeah, I think it is. We just want to get the, my, my opponent's creature off the table. I have another creature plus uh, the Knightly Valor coming in. So... I do want to continue to be the aggressor here. And I'm, I'm attacking with like all my mana. And I think my opponent hasn't really shown a whole lot of wanting to play around combat tricks, plus my opponent's dying to them anyway, so there's no good reason to do that uh, still. I'm basically cycling the Rune Servitor. I get a 2-4. Ooh. Yeah, I'll play both, for sure. Dumps my hand, but uh, that's fine. Interesting to see if the Knightly Valor I actually um, find an opening to use. Just because my opponent has things like, you know, Disperse and, or is it Disperse or Dispel? Yeah, Disperse, and we already saw the Anchor to the Aether, but there could be more of those. Here, though, my opponent only has one creature. We have Lethal on board without another creature. Opponent has... Okay, that's pretty good. Especially with two mana up to where uh, Disperse is a reality. Huh. Looks like my Onslaught has to slow it down. Huh. Even if I put the Knightly Valor on the Stalwart Aven, it becomes just a 4-6, so it can only kill one of each of these. So I do need to hang out for a little bit. Um... I draw another removal spell or get some more action online. It's so unfortunate my opponent knows about the Knightly Valor. Probably always hold up uh, Disperse. Oh no! Does my opponent have this? My opponent is now stabilized, so any bomb type effect can help out. Plus, just if my opponent keeps drawing creatures, then it, it makes uh, my strategy of just trying to make trades happen. Um, really challenging. This I like, though, quite a lot. That'll help get um, the Stalwart Aven through. My opponent ends up keeping, um, ends up having an opening. I can do the Knightly Valor, attack in, take two of the, the Flyers out. Uh, it would be a 2-3 and the 2-2 two -two that dies. My opponent would have to, oh, my opponent can even kill it then, actually. No, that'd be just fantastic for me. At this point, I think I just attack with a Totem Guide Heart Beast. It's a 3-6. Plus to put a couple things for it. trades for one, though. It only trades for one thing, though. But does my opponent want to go to that risk? Versus if I just attack with a Cleric. Yeah, I'm just going to attack with a Cleric. Um, I'm happy with it. my Cleric to trade with anything. 
um, which is probably just going to be the knight, but that's okay. We're just clearing the board away. They trade. I pass. I'll be patient. More than likely, my opponent doesn't have it, or more than likely, oh, oh wow. I could lose now, for sure. I mean, one thing that's nice is because the instant indestructible thing just happened, um, I'm not getting blown out because it's just until end of turn, but that's a whole lot of power on the board, and now I, I regret having passed out a lot. Um, makes me consider if I want to just try to get this knightly valor going one way or another. Opponent can't really attack, so that's nice. I'm really debating if I want to go ahead and put um, the Knightly Valor on the Stalwart Aven. Maybe I put it on the Anointer. If my opponent does have like a disperse or something, and disperse is the only one that matters, then uh, at least I get to replay it. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Let's see if my opponent has it. Could I just put it on the flyer? Ah, uh, I forgot. Yeah, I actually did want to try to go for the flyer because that allowed the flyer to start attacking. Because it'd be a 4-6 that could get pumped to a 5-7. Okay, now my opponent did have it. So we baited it out. Not baited it out, but I decided to go for it. Um, it's now gone. It's a one-for-one one trade, uh, which is a bummer. And it, my patience um, might be an issue considering my opponent's not taking over the game. And I, I might have needed that, that power level of a card to pound through the last four points of damage. My opponent does have that big ol' 7-7 seven, seven that can start picking off things. So if that gets drawn, I, I lose. Here comes a Claustrophobia, which also now is going to keep one of my two main blockers away, especially with these flyers, and my opponent's going to start be able to chunk in a bunch of damage. Alright, so I need to draw something fairly quickly. I haven't seen more of what my opponent's deck does, some actually like decent powerful cards. Um, I'm going to be less haphazard in my attacks. I still think the deck is built the way it should be. I think my gameplay would be very adjusted. Um, as I'm anticipating going to the next the next round. Maybe I do want Disperse. It just gets rid of all these knights. But that's a 7 drop. I anticipate winning by then anyway. I mean, I'm not guaranteed, but that's what I want. This is okay. Not great, but okay. Do I have flyers? Hmm. I know I cut my ring warden owl. I'm trying to think if there's any way for me to pound through all this. And my opponent has just like the biggest defense in the world. And inevitability starts happening based on um Oh gosh. Based on my opponent having that big ol' 7-7 seven, seven, just pick off creatures every turn in the stalemate. And my opponent, I mean, my opponent can kill me in like two turns, four, five, six, and yeah, in two turns at the 10 drop slot. But is content just going two for two? Uh, I think we just bounced the Thopter here. Get rid of a token. I'd rather have it than the, the Night Vigilance Duders. If I had like a flyer or something, I could have bounced the Thunderclap Weber and try to like pound in, but oh, yes, I do. Um, there's still a lot of damage potentially coming through here, but I think the way I win is if I do draw at the bar, my opponent gets a little overextends him or herself, because my opponent's at 4 life. I might be able to get 4 damage in. Uh, but it's going to be tricky, and I'm pretty sure my opponent's going to draw some. My opponent might have sided out the 7 drop or the uh, the Sphinx's Tutelage, seeing how aggressive my deck was. That's, that's an interesting thing. 
I don't have any renowned cards except for this. I could untap my guy. It's a 3 3 prevent all damage. Attack in. It has to be blocked or I kill my opponent, which means it gets to at least eat a creature. So it's an interesting option, considering. Um, do I want to use my Shrouding Mist as a removal spell? For like the aspiring or not? Do I want to do that? Pay one to kill this guy, and then that's all it does. Eh, for now, no. Maybe wait if my opponent goes ahead and tries to attack with all the flyers. This might be how I can win. Again, overextending. I think the only way I win is if my opponent overextends him or herself. Interesting to note, I can't do the Enshrouding Mist defensively because I need that plus one, plus one, plus the target attacking to actually get there. I don't really play my lands because there's no need. I don't need lands for anything else on my curve. So I lose on cards before my opponent does because for some reason. Oh, because my uh, Totem Guide Heart Beast. Hey, a free blade. This is good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. We're actually in a place where if I happen to draw more creatures than my opponent, I could try to just like bash through with a bunch and use the anointer to help. We'll see. I mean, I need a lot more to go right, but within a shrouding miss, it could work out. Ooh, another flyer. That's not good. That means my opponent can bash in for four, six, for eight and then not be worried about um, something silly happening with my flyer. But again, my opponent gets a little overconfident. My opponent could have killed me by now, by the way. Might be playing around like uh, another Celestial Flare or something. And I do have some removal spells still to draw. All right, here it goes. Getting to the end. Just biding my time. Ooh, no. All the flyers. All the flyers. This is such a good card for my opponent. Interesting. Very different mirror match where I'm base white on the ground and my opponent... Well, I guess you can't really say base white or base blue considering a Gideon's Phalanx. But still, um, I love these tower guys. But you can see my opponent went with more of those types of spells. I don't think my hope of drawing more creatures than my opponent is coming true. It really does seem like if my opponent tries to go for a lethal attack, and if I don't actually die, then I might be able to survive. Oh my gosh, how's that even possible? There's no way to get four damage through. Shiny missed, Lord Aven. This might happen. This might be the only thing I got. Oh my gosh, another. I'll play the lands now, because my opponent's kind of have some in hand, and might be confused, like, okay, so maybe he does have a bunch of stuff in hand that he's just not playing? Who knows? Opponent has 12, probably has 2 in hand too. Might have about equal number of lands here. My opponent did draw a bunch more. And after a few turns, my opponent doesn't attack in, then might deck him or herself out. Do I have ways for my opponent to draw cards? I do not. Oh, okay, okay. Attack with more. Please attack with more. Three, four, five. Yeah, my opponent should only attack with seven. Um, just based on a... Uh, you want to do a two-turn clock, and that's it. All right. Hmm. I get to destroy a target tapped creature and have an enshrouding mist. I need to get four points of damage in. I'm pretty sure I'm dead. If I attack with Stalwart Aven using the Shrine Mist to untap it and pump with the Anointer, that's four, but my opponent has two flyers that I cannot kill right now. So my opponent would know that and go for the go for the block. It would kill one of the flyers, which would be helpful. Swift Reckoning. Again, if my opponent tries to attack with these again, 
I can use it to kill one and maybe draw a turn. I can try attacking with everything and see if anything goes through. Kill one of these guys, Swift Reckoning another. So if I attack in with the Shining Mist and kill like the Ring Warden Owl, opponent bashes in with the Flyers, I kill the Thunderclap Waver or something else. Possibly there's one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Yeah, I think my best bet right now is this. I think my highest chance right now is to try to attack in with this guy and see if it um, my opponent misses out on it being lethal or um, is forced to block with the flyer. Noting the time that I'm a little bit under and more likely going to go to game three and I have to be very aware of that. So my opponent have, no, my opponent doesn't, so that's great. Opponent can attack with everything. We'll see if my opponent overextends. But this sets me up for a potential win here. So he's tutelage, how interesting. <sighs> At least it does nothing. If my opponent attacks with everything, is there any way for me to win? Oh, I see. I forgot how much this... You can just do it again. Do I die? Two. I have one draw step. What's my opponent gonna do? What's my opponent gonna do? Play a yoked ox. Yeah, I don't think I can win. Do I show the swift record? No, my opponent's not even letting me. And... That's pretty much the game, friend. I get one more draw step. Oh no, my opponent's just going to activate Toolage again. On next activation... I mean, my opponent gets to see the entire deck, but I mean, I'm conceding. On time as well. Super close. I still think my deck is well set up. I think my opponent's sideboarded fairly well. Looks like, um... Well, maybe 7 drop is still there. I think his Toolage is still there. I don't know. An option to counter, again, the big old 7 drop. But I think I just want to win before then. So just make sure I keep a hand that feels that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could do the Jailer. I want to be aggressive. Yeah, but I don't want to cut any of these other ones. Yeah. All right. Play quickly, since I tend not to, especially when I'm recording. <laughs> Need to make sure we get there in the amount of time. We can do this, friends! And definitely playing first. Um, this is keepable. I'm still gonna go one, two. Um, and I'll search up the, uh, I think a second island, so I have the claustrophobia in hand. We'll see. Um, this is a Nombo here, admittedly. Yep, that's gonna slow things down all right. Let's see if I get my point of damage in. I do. Not. <laughs> Alright, I'm 10 seconds behind my opponent, so this F6er is going to have to work pretty well. They don't get to play a, um, a three drop next turn, which is super notable. Yoke Docks is really good on the on the slowdown. Celestial Fair is nice as well. I'm probably gonna go search up the um, the island still because it gets either way it gets me one removal spell, but I'm more likely to draw a uh, a planes. I'm just going to do this now so I can be F6-ing. I guess I don't really want to F6 through my opponent's next turn, so... But still, I can just, like, click a lot quicker this way. Or click OK. Knight of Pilgrim's Road, that's fine. Just 
now I will F6. Dispel is fantastic. We will go ahead and attack with Open Free Blade by his or her lonesome. No, we just don't care. We're gonna play the Stalwart Aven. Such a good blocker. We're also gonna try to get in through in the air nowadays. I uh, probably should play the knight. I can start getting through the yoke docks. Yeah, I should play the knight. Again, remember, I want the most power on the board. I'm not. My opponent wants to slow down. I want to be aggressive. Tower Geist. Do it, buddy. Go for it. Connect four. Discarding. Oh, opponent found something good. That's a little bit worrisome. Opponents have doubts, so I'll attack with both now. Because I have this, I have this, I have this. So many good things. I do want to play my knight, but I want to get rid of the, the, the yoke docks as well, and that's cool. It's actually more important to me to get rid of the yoke docks, having claustrophobia on um, backup in city is just so good. Target player sacrifices a creature. I get to keep the spell alive. I get renowned. My guy is now renowned. You are so well known, my friend. Catching up on time. As in, I'm a little bit ahead now. Oh, I should have. Oh, I missed out a point out. My point should be at 17. This anointer uh, should have uh, pumped a stalwart even. That was dumb. Focus. Stop having so much fun, Ryan. Silly Ryan. Drake's off for kids. Oh, your own even, you don't shy. We might just go ahead and bounce something at end of turn. Is that what I want to do? Probably yes. No, because there's still not a whole lot that uh, can be done here by said opponent, now that my opponent got a little greedy and attacked. Everyone's going to get through. My opponent's probably not going to block. I can disperse next turn. My opponent wants to do a trade or something. That's OK. Since I'm going to have my 3-2 online next turn. No, I did it again, but this time I didn't mean to. I'm just... Ugh, my, my opponent should be at 14 right now. Arr. Celestial Flare? You're Celestial Flaring <laughs> me? Alright, my opponent did the same thing I did. I guess it wouldn't have mad. No, it would have max. Would, my opponent would have been at 14 right now. <laughs> so annoying. I thought about dispelling my own Aven. Uh, not sure that's right or not, but I have a follow-up. I want to use Disperse, hopefully, to get a card out of my opponent in some way, shape, or form. Like a two-for-one, not just a one-for-one. One. May not happen, but we'll see. Attacking with a 4-3 is nice with Disperse up. Maybe we get there on the combo wombo. Opponent does have three cards in hand, six mana. My opponent has way more powerful spells than I do. Opponent's down to under five minutes. Ooh, just wants to go for it. You go for it, girl. You go, girl. You do it. You do you, girl. Means I might just disperse whatever my opponent ends up playing here. Or, uh, yeah. I think that's worth it. My opponent can't play it. Um, I save a lot of damage. I know it exists for next turn. And I get to, uh, Crack back for a bunch. Cluster is bad against that, by the way. See, my opponent has his or her own disperse. We're gonna attack for four. Get this race on. Flyers are real. <laughs> Want to leave up another uh, um, celestial flare? So I'm taking six in the air this turn, assuming the Wyvern comes down. I have four, five, six, seven. Oh, not even a Wyvern. Oh, man. The opponent's deck is sweet, not going to lie. But we're going to try to do this the uh, the good old um, tempo way. Claustrophobia out. Attack with more. Just a bunch more stuff. But I'm not super hopeful because my opponent still has a lot of power coming at me. We'll see. We shall see. Ooh, 
Ooh, Celestial Flare. That's just good. So I can deck with everything, right? This is a 2-2. Two, 2-3. Two, two, yeah. I'm not attacking with that. But I will not miss the damage this time. My opponent could do like a bunch of chumps and stuff, but I think if I get my opponent's cards on hand, it could be okay. Could have been right just to do a claustrophobia on one and then attack, but not too sure. Still saving it. My opponent's tapped out though now, which is nice. My opponent should be at 10. I could lose to that, and that's annoying. Opponent's going for a chump. Okay. No! <laughs> I'm so annoyed! I never use the anointer. This is annoying. Gonna save three points of damage here. Probably just do a Celestial Flare. Um, to save some more points of damage, because the Wavern is coming down. Thunderclap. My opponent should be at seven. I'm gonna. It's very real that I've, I'm losing myself the game at this because uh, three points is huge life swing now. That's an entire hit with the token free blade. It's uh, by the way, first time I forgot it. The second two times I'm doing is I have um, some muscle memory, in which I push a button to click OK. And I do that when I'm quick and feeling under pressured. Um, but now that's not happening, so that's good. Oh gosh, knightly valor. I'm gonna be patient on this one now. Attack in, it's a 4 4 plus a Celestial Flare. Yeah, we're good. Um, anyway, so I'm trying to be careful not to use my muscle memory in clicking my button that clicks OK, which is how I clicked through after blocks are declared, and not using my um, anointer. Okay, here comes the Wavern. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Double block it. Oh, you could triple block. I didn't think about that. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -mm. Nice. Who do I want dead? Um. So hold on. What's happening? I can. Oh, it doesn't kill them all. So, because of four four. If I use the Celestial Flare, my opponent just sacks the Tower Geist. Um, and then everybody stays alive. Um, or I can make the trade happen and Celestial Flare. And then I have a Knightly Valor with a... Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Do this. See what happens. If I put on some other spell or something, I could still pump. Well, I'm going to pump anyway. Let's see what my opponent does. Yeah. Definitely do not want to forget to do that this turn. I'm throwing this game away. Did not attack with my knight for no reason. Should have attacked for sure. Should ya? Oh my gosh, I'm seeing room five. I don't even like that song. I think I've heard it twice in my life, and that's why it's so annoying. Okay. Ooh, Swift Reckoning. That's nice. I'm going to... Oh, man, this is so sketchy. This is what happened last time. I'm playing the Knightly Valor. I need to win with this Knightly Valor. Does it resolve? Watch. Another Disperse. My opponent's been holding it forever. No, it resolves. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy. Luck, luck. All the way. Okay. I'm going to continue the beats down. I'm going to use my anointer. Hopefully kill a couple things. My opponent can do some, some blocking. That's true. Bunch of one-for-ones, but we're clearing the board. I get my knight. I have a swift reckoning. My opponent should be at seven. There's also only two minutes left on my opponent's clock, so if my opponent doesn't start beating down... Hey, hey. So Frickening is on target, by the way. Ready to rock and roll. Uh, 
Going for the double lock. We're definitely going to put the waiver in front if that's what my opponent wants to do. Yeah, you got to put these guys around town. If that's the case, who do I care more about? I want it like that. I do you want to do five points of damage? Finally. My opponent should be dead. My opponent is not. Because the three points I miss with Anointer plus the uh, attack last turn. How interesting. Is my opponent attacking? No. Yes! That's awesome. I'm so killing that. It's the one card my opponent didn't see for me. Ooh, that's also good. I'm one land away from doing both. Does it matter? This becomes a five... Four, five, six, seven. It becomes a five, whatever. This is a three, something can become a four, four. So it either stays alive or kills something. Hell yeah. Let's do it. Let's get in there. Pressure, pressure. They both have to be blocked. Oh, no, they don't. So let's look at the wrong uh, stats here on that protection. This guy can get through, and my opponent can go down to one. This guy obviously has to be blocked, so my opponent's probably just going to double block, and then I'll kill this dude, do four, I have a bunch of lethal creatures, and a swift reckoning if my opponent gets silly and tries to attack. Opponent is a double block, so... There's the assigned blocking order. Opponent could have just disperse, kill a knight. But didn't have it last time, so we'll see. Okay. Oh, my opponent, does, if that pump spell comes through, does that kill me? Three, four, five, six. Seven? No, it doesn't. So my opponent does not attack. I'm happy just to gain some life here. Oh, no, wait. If I attack with everything, my opponent's dead, right? I'll, just, I'll play it safe. I'll wait for a cleric at the forward order. I'm fine with that. I I can't really attack the Amber Tactician and pump to 4 4 because of this, so. Gain some life. My opponent's at 38 seconds. It's just super conservative, super safe. Disperse your own tower, guys. Dude, my opponent's going to draw a card. I don't think there's enough time to kill me, though, Home Slice. You got to attack in to do that, and the Swift Reckoning's totally protecting me. So sure, but right now the stalemate favors me since um, my opponent's so low on time and has to kill me like super fast. And if my opponent does go for attack, I'm instantly swift reckoning. Don't want to kill the innocent shenanigans. If my opponent taps out, that's great. Okay. Uh, but my opponent's not attacking, so I don't have a tapped creature. I'll play the wait game. I'm very okay with the weight game. I do not die on the crackback. We kill the wavern. It takes one, two, three. It takes five points of damage out of the air. That's fine. Go for it, friendos. And we won out of time, but my opponent would only um, have done one, two. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven damage to me, so we would have won on the crackback. Um, Woohoo! Well, this, that was a long match. On to round two.